It means a lot to me, actually. These things are uh, really good for our psyche, and uh, it gives me a lot of inspiration. I think um, I'm set for next five, six years. I, <laughs> I have to prove that I'm worthy of these awards. I think when something like this is given to you, you feel you are responsible for doing a better job than you would have done otherwise. But uh, that is the reason why I think these are very, very inspirational. And uh, having my picture in the front page of a magazine is, I never dreamt about that. I just <laughs> never even thought this would happen. I think many things. I think plant breeders themselves are just the leaders of a group of people. Individually, they cannot achieve very much unless they get support from all kinds of people, including their collaborators and the support staff, e even, as I said, uh, even the office staff. They make our life much easier than it would be otherwise. If we had to do all the things necessary that we need to do, we will not probably in our lifetime ever breed 12, 14 or 20 varieties like we have, I have managed to do. So it's, it's not an individual thing, but um, I think my success is because of all the support I get from all the collaborators we have because the breeding means you have to test it very widely and for testing you have to have uh, people from all the entire Western Canada to collaborate with you. I not only collaborate with just the agronomy and plant breeding type of people but I collaborate with animal nutritionist, even human nutritionist for some of my work and that way I think we have made a lot more impact in agriculture industry than we can individually do. I think we have a uh, shortage of plant breeders in this country. It's not in just in this country, even in the U.S. When we wanted to hire some plant breeders in the uh, Agriculture Canada wanted to hire some plant breeders last year, and we realized that uh, we are not even training enough students and that is the reason why we do not have trained plant breeders those who can take the jobs when we retire uh, that is why I should put a, a plug for supporting not only the plant breeders that are there they have to support them to do their job properly but also they have to support the universities and um, say senior scientists to train more plant breeders that would be required to do take up the positions that would be coming through. Sure you can train all kinds of biotechnologies and all that but that is only one part of one technique that is uh, eventually all these plants even what they develop have to be tested and in the field under field condition have to be selected properly for all the characters that uh, a producer would need in their material and that is the reason why it is key to have plant breeders in place to and we I, I can give you guarantee that we do not have enough that we need one of the things I would say the plan the young people should do is keep their minds and uh, ears open for anything that they can put their hands on, if they can put, if they can get good germplasm, that would be the initial stage for starting a good breeding program. And at the same time, collaborate with all kinds of people that can make the product much more superior than just looking at just one characteristic at a time. Just if a plant breeder thinks that it would be good for human consumption or for consumption of animals, you have to have a nutritionist in, on board to help you out. So that is the reason I think you have to, plant breeder has to be a good person first uh, who could command some respect from different areas, also get cooperation from all kinds of different disciplines.
My main concern now is to come up with um, cultivars of uh, uh, legume or bloat-free legumes that can be grown with alfalfa if possible or independently for pasture because uh, for a few years in the past we depended in Canada particularly we depended heavily on uh, feed lots and things like that we kept these animals for a long time but uh, my, now the trend would be and the public would probably not like to see so many animals in the feed lots they would like to see animals grazing freely and it is only in the best interest of animal industry that these animals graze freely not be cooked up in small areas and fed for uh, quick uh, growth but if we can help alfalfa grazing and that can be made bloat free then I think we have made a major impact in that area there may be uh, alfalfa in the future which can probably um, prevent bloat but at this time there is no alfalfa that is bloat free that's why instead of trying to wait for the alfalfa varieties uh, coming from the private companies to fill this uh, particular gap I thought we will work on legumes that can do make the alfalfa pastures bloat free and San, my sandfoin work is a very good example of that I would also work on bird's foot trefoil and sisal milk wedge and see if they can also do the same thing to alfalfa pastures, make them bloat free that means. I think uh, um, my idea would be to combine the efforts, not just do either public or private. I think both these uh, groups would combine the efforts. The private companies can support even uh, the uh, public uh, plant breeders by giving them grants and uh, giving them some extra funds. If the infrastructure is already there, it would be much cheaper for them to finance some of that work going on in a public uh, place. But if the infrastructure, they can develop themselves and have the money to spend, that would be fine too. But the key thing would be to combine the efforts between the two and have always have a free dialogue between what the private companies are looking for and what the public breeders should do to help them out. If I was not talking to the seed industry people, then I would not be doing something that would be useful for them because eventually they would be sold by seed companies. So instead of me doing all the work first and then you know, trying to find the company who would sell the product, if I knew what they were really interested in, what they would like to see, then that would be a much better thing, much better situation. That is what I think we should combine the efforts for. That way we are far, far ahead. It would definitely have an impact because uh, what I hear is that means there would be less breeders doing the weed breeding work. But what I am hearing also is that the private companies are starting breeding programs in Canada. They were not there before breeding wheat and barley and all these crops, but now they are getting into it. So that is a good thing. But at the same time, you cannot ex expect one breeder to breed for the whole country. So it would not be a wise thing if you expect one, um, say, winter wheat breeder to breed for the entire country. It would not happen. He would not be successfully doing anything, neither satisfy the West or the East, because we have a very distinct two types of climate, eco-climatic regions. We cannot have varieties going back and forth from one area to the other because the stress and the conditions are very different in these two regions. So I think uh, that is the reason why I feel that probably there would be some time for adjusting to this. There were people, uh, the federal government, just to cut back uh, the expenses and things like that. They have done this, but at the same time, I think they probably would realize that this is not a very uh, good working situation. They may revert back 
and have few other people hired to take care of some of this.